This is the Insta360 GO 3, the all new micro action camera from Insta360. And when they asked me to make a video about their all new camera, it gave us an idea. Could we recreate the F1 visor cam shot? We're also gonna see how the GO 3 steps up the game since the GO 2, and why this could be the most versatile action camera for anyone wanting to get started in creating car content. And speaking of car content, that's what we do here at Sports and Touring. We make car content, mostly vlogs, mainly me, but also my son and the adventures that we get up to. We make extensive use of Insta360 cameras and you might have seen one or two of our videos explaining exactly how we get some of those impossible driving shots. So if you like the look of that, please hit the subscribe button. Now back to the GO 3. Now, one of the things they've improved in the GO 3 over the GO 2 is the image resolution. The GO 2 ran at 1440. This is now at 2.7K, so around 15, 20 pixels high, a little more than the 1440, and of course, also a little wider at 2,704 pixels. Now, the biggest improvement for me over the GO 2 with the GO 3 is its recording time, and that's been achieved in two ways. The first is its battery life, with this lasting up to 50% longer in specific circumstances. The second is heat dissipation. Now, what would happen with the GO 2 is when you run it at full resolution in pro mode, which kind of gives you a slight over capture so you can do a subtle reframing of the shot in post-production, this would overheat after about 10 minutes. So if you wanted to use that mode, 10 minutes was about as much as you could get from it. It still lasted a lot longer when you didn't run it in pro mode, but if you wanted the pro mode feature, 10 minutes was it. With this, heat dissipation is dramatically improved. And so far I've run it in pro mode and I was recording for well over 10 minutes and it didn't even look like it was starting to fade. Reportedly, this will give you 30 solid minutes in full mode, perhaps even longer. It also introduces three new video modes, looped recording, pre-recording and timed capture. But most of all, what I really appreciate about this camera are the accessories that allow you to mount this thing just about everywhere. Just like the GO 2, it also has the pendant mount, which you could, of course, if you want to, just put it in a top shirt pocket and attach the camera there on top of your clothing. And it allows you to actually unwind the cables. So you only need as much as is necessary. And of course, there is the hat clip, allowing you to drop the camera in here for the ultimate POV shots. clip has been improved considerably with this little lip here that allows you to fit it to your cap far more easily than before. And of course it can be clipped to the back of the cap as well as the peak. But if you were wondering if previous mount accessories for your GO 2 will work on the GO 3, unfortunately that's not the case. To achieve the extended recording time you will notice that the GO 3 is slightly bigger than the old outgoing GO 2, just ever so slightly taller and ever so slightly thicker. Now the coolest accessory by far is the action pod. This takes your micro action camera and turns it into a full size action camera with not only a screen on the back, but the screen that turns around and gives you forward preview as well. Now this is a big step forward compared to the GO 2. The GO 2 came with a case that was both protective and had a battery inside it so it could recharge the camera while it was in the case. It also had a quarter inch thread and obviously a USB-C port. Now, when you opened the camera, it gave you a small screen that allowed you to make some very basic settings adjustments using these buttons here. However, this is a full touch screen. This allows you to do all the settings changes from onboard the camera. It also gives you a live preview, whether the camera is in the pod or roaming free outside of the pod. That is very, very cool. And it comes with a quick release mount with a quarter inch thread, which allows you to mount it to just about anything, including a selfie stick, which means you can use it like a vlogging camera. And there are multiple stages of image stabilization. So when you're on the move, you know that your footage will remain buttery smooth, which of course gives you some options for maybe some creative shots. What I like about both the Action Pod and the Quick Release is how secure they feel. It's attached both magnetically and mechanically. The Quick Release's quarter inch thread allows you to use your own preferred suction mount, making it possible to attach it just about anywhere. Because of its size, the Action Pod, its ease of use, and array of mounting options, I can't think of a more versatile camera for anyone wanting to get started in making car content.
There are so many cool features to the Insta360 GO 3 that honestly, I couldn't possibly show everything in this single video. And I'm sure there's camera channels out there that probably will go into a lot more detail. And we're a car channel, not a camera channel. So I'm gonna leave that to the experts. But I think the real reason you're here is to see what you can do with the camera. And specifically, does it fit inside a helmet? And can we recreate the F1 visor cam shot? Now, please remember that this is a creative experiment. I'm just showing you how I achieved the shot, not making any recommendations of what you should do. Bear in mind that the real F1 visor cam is integrated into the driver's helmet and will have been designed with crash safety in mind. The GO 3 is a consumer action camera with an integrated battery, so not designed for this specific purpose. Now that's out of the way, let's see how it turned out. So as I was looking into how to do this particular shot, I first had to see where would the camera go? Now on the F1 visor cam, it kind of sits sort of in the side there. And yeah, that kind of just about wedges in, but my concern would be it does potentially block side visibility. Now I was hoping to get it back in here, but then it protrudes into the helmet, so that wouldn't work. So it became clear that I wasn't gonna be able to get the camera in the position that I wanted on the side. However, we could probably get it somewhere around here. So to get this shot, I'm gonna use the baseball cap clip slid onto a sports sweatband, and around it is a fabric cable tie, often used in, say, network cabling. That's wrapped around just to make sure that it doesn't come off because it doesn't clip as firmly as I would like. Then I've got a second sweatband to go behind it because this is a little bit rough and I don't want that scratching up my uh, forehead. So the idea is I put this on, then put the helmet on and we're good to go. thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring this video and of course if you want to get your very own Insta360 GO 3 check out the special link in the description which if you buy through that link you'll be saying a special thank you back to the channel but it also may give you access to certain select free accessories on certain cameras but most of all a special thank you to you for sticking to the end and of course if you've enjoyed this video I have a feeling you might enjoy this one too yes <laughs> oh wow wow that was crazy oh wow Oh, by the way, this is what the audio sounds like inside the helmet. Hope you enjoyed it.